Hi, I'm Pastor Josh Barnes. This is Justin Barnes. This is the show where we're unashamed to look at political, social, cultural, and even theological issues from a biblical worldview. We do that because Jesus really rose from the dead, and he said the Bible's true. And if Jesus rose from the dead, that proves that he knew what he was talking about. The Bible really is true, and then you can't be right about issues if you disagree with the Bible. Don't believe me that, the, that Jesus rose from the dead. We have a whole episode now that is up on the channel where we defend that and, and go, through the, uh, go through all the evidence. And I think we did a, a pretty amazing job, but go check that out if you haven't seen it yet. Um, <laughs> I'm not biased or anything. I just think we did a really good job presenting it. Uh, it, it was, Does your arm ever get sore from patting yourself the, on the, the back? Or? The concern isn't really how presenting the evidence, right? Like the point is I, I was really concerned we wouldn't have time to fit it all in. And I felt like we did a good job fitting it in. Whether we did a good job presenting the evidence, that's up to you guys. Go check it out. Uh, let us know what you think. Um, <laughs> see here, here I was going, I was really happy after recording that episode because I really glory in the resurrection, but you, it's you glory in the content. That's fine. I no, mean, no. <laughs> different strokes. That's, that's cool. All right. Listen, we all have pride problems. I am I don't know that this is a negative pride, but I am pretty proud of how, of how the Look, Lord. Look, I get used it. You're of Cephas. You're that. of you're of Paul. You're of Cephas. I'm of Christ. <laughs> I'm just holier than you. That's all. That's right. That's right. J Justin is holier than than me, and he's also humble, more humble, far more humble. Um, I'm writing a book on it, actually. <laughs> anyway, no, but guys, really, we do. We are kind of on cloud 10 because we kind of record these back to back and we thought that one came out pretty well. Um, and so you guys let us know if you feel the same way about it. If you think it's terrible, give us a comment. Let us know. If you think it's great, also give us a comment because the people who think it's terrible are going to be commenting. <laughs> so counter yeah, they're that. very vocal. They don't <laughs> need encouragement. <laughs> the positive one, <laughs> if, uh, if there are positive ones. Anyway, so today we wanted to, um, we wanted to talk about other people and how they deal with uh, the resurrection. <laughs> <laughs> we thought it was good to, to provide evidence for the resurrection on uh, the week after Easter. But uh, two weeks ago, the, this was the week this was the week before Palm Sunday. So it had been two weeks before uh, this episode is airing. Um, we had uh, Ainsley Earhart from Fox News had uh, Joel Osteen on Fox News and he actually joined her for her Ainsley's Bible study on the Fox Nation app. And uh, he had his message uh, for for people for, for Easter, and I wanted to play a, a little bit of this. Uh, we, I actually have the. Uh, I'm going to play you a few pieces from the interview at uh, on Fox News, and then uh, then I'm going to play you a clip from the uh, Ainsley's uh, Bible study. Excuse me, Ainsley's Bible study. Uh, you can find all this stuff on FoxNews.com. I'm not. I didn't steal any of it. It's all up there. Um, free to free to watch. I'm going to play a few clips of it, and then we're going to talk about um, whether Joel Osteen... Now, Justin, we don't really talk a whole lot about Joel Osteen on this channel. We probably could, um, because we like to, to deal with theological issues from a biblical worldview, and he doesn't really like to deal with theological issues from a biblical worldview. <laughs> he likes to deal with issues that make you feel Much. good. Well, the, the, the thing is, actually, this is a discussion you and I had, uh, actually, just earlier today that we were having. Um, the way Joel Osteen handles the Bible, the way a lot of woke preachers handle the Bible, the way a lot of actual fundamentalist preachers handle the Bible, it's all kind of the same basic thing of, like, use the Bible just in so much as you can twist it to prove whatever point you want to make. It's the same thing you'll get with Osteen. Um, it's but people like Ol Osteen because, uh, in contrast to a, an extreme fundamentalist, um, Oost, oh, that's that sounds weird. If if you let me define it, then it, it makes sense. But you know, if if you define it wrong, that that can sound wrong. Um, but uh, Joel Osteen actually twists the Bible to make you feel good, which people like. You know, that's you know that it does. And a fundamentalist really will good. make it will twist it to make you feel terrible. So yeah. yeah. But the thing about Joel, whereas Osteen, the Bible does both, you're going to see <laughs> in, in in these clips that Joel Osteen really he likes to make the Bible all about you. And that's why you feel good. Yeah. You know. The, the things about Jesus are really all about you and your life um, rather than being about Jesus. And I think that's wrong. But the, but I'll let you be the judge and, well, and I'll also be well, the judge. Well, let's we forget. <laughs> but, uh, on, on, that, on that point, lest we forget, his wife said, we don't go to church to worship for Jesus. We go to worship for ourselves. Mm -hmm. we, I think we, we did a response to that one last year. Yeah, that, I think we did. But it's just – it's one of the most uh, – uh, horrifying things I've ever heard from anyone that calls himself a leader of a church. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus has to be central in the church. When church becomes centered around me, I go to church to get, not to give 
we should go to church to give praise to God and to give edification to other believers. But instead, church has become, I'm going to church to get uh, praise from God, <laughs> from the Bible, because the Bible is just all about praising me, and to get edification from other believers. But guess what? That leaves nobody to give edification to anybody. <laughs> so um, this is a problem in, in a lot of churches. Thankfully, not in my church um, at the moment, but uh, I'm the pastor. So if it happens, I got to I gotta deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> if that does come into into the church, um, okay. Let's uh, let's play a little bit of this. Here's Fox News uh, from I think two weeks ago. And when you see the images, I mean, it really reminds us of how blessed we are to be here in America. What goes through your mind? What message of hope can you give us? You know, God still has us in the palm of His hand, and I think Ainsley, we are blessed to be a blessing. So sometimes it feels overwhelming, but if you can just, you know, be a blessing in your life, maybe it's not overseas, but be a blessing to a coworker, give them a smile, just say a kind word, do something. I believe that we're we're made to give. That the closest thing to the heart of God is helping somebody else, and I think that's where true fulfillment comes from. You know, Joel, months ago, we were talking about who we wanted to have on for Ainsley's Bible study, which is on Fox Nation, for an Easter message. And uh, we definitely wanted to have you on. And then this happens in Ukraine. So when you and I sat down for Ainsley's Bible study, we talked first about Ukraine and how to get through all of this. And we also talked about an Easter message. This Sunday is Palm Sunday. What is your Easter message? My Easter message, Ainsley, is that sometimes things in our life can cannot look good, almost look dead, you know, a relationship, a health, a, a career, but God knows how to resurrect dead things. Think about how on Friday it didn't look good for Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, they, they put him in the tomb, but he didn't stay there. So maybe, maybe some people feel like it's Friday in their life, but my message is that Sunday is coming, mm -hmm. that God has new beginnings. He knows how to turn things around. I don't believe you'd be alive unless God had something great in front of you. And part of that starts with having faith and believing that God, I, I do believe I'm in the palm of your hand. Mm -hmm. Just give God something to work with and it's amazing what he can do. You guys, I should have put our our picture up on the screen while that was playing because you you should have seen Justin like with his with his head, hand, his head in his hands, uh, bit, major face palm over there, Justin. Now I had, I love this because I get to pick a lot of these videos, and Justin's too lazy to pick videos to throw at me, so I get to see them ahead of time. I've already rolled my eyes at him, Justin. What are your thoughts on this uh, Easter message from Joel Osteen? You know. I really feel like I might have wasted time putting so much effort into learning exegesis and hermeneutics. Because um, I can't tell you how many times I've heard this whole, you know, uh, the resurrection is about God resurrect. Like, one of the fundamental principles of studying the Bible is discovering the authorial intent. What is it that the author is communicating to the audience that he was talking about? Are we to believe that a person at the base of the cross watching Jesus crucified is going, that's my relationship. <laughs> that's, that's my debt. That's what this was. I can take up my cross and follow Jesus. That means my family's getting back together. Like, it is bizarre to me that anybody counts this stuff like i i've been at an event where almost this exact same point was made a, a very uh well-known christian event here in pennsylvania where they brought on this well-known preacher and he comes out and he's preaching about jesus resurrecting the the dead boy and he's saying jesus has the power of resurrection so he'll resurrect your relationship he'll resurrect your finances he'll resurrect your your job or whatever it is that is not the point of resurrection the point of the resurrection of, of others was Jesus is the Messiah. The point of his resurrection, as we discussed in the last video, is he was raised for our justification. The point of the resurrection, if you want to talk about it, Joel, which you're never going to do, is that people are sinners deserving of hell and they need salvation. And Christ was crucified and raised as the sacrifice because you needed a sacrifice or else you would pay for your own sins for eternity. That's the message of the resurrection. Not this, oh, it's all about you getting more money or you having a better relationship. Oh, that's infuriating. Yeah, the resurrection was the evidence that is so much, right? But I like to I like to see it as the icing on the cake. You ever had cake without ice icing? It's kind of annoyingly bad. But you put icing on it, it's amazing. Jesus dying on the cross is just another human being dying on a cross. 
until the resurrection. Now, Jesus dying on the cross is significant and powerful and meaningful. Why? Because he didn't deserve to die for his own sins. He was dying for our sins, and he rises to show that he has victory over the grave. Like, this is the resurrection. There's so much. But here's the thing. When you, um, Joel Osteen doesn't believe in hell. So there's no reason for Jesus to die other than just to show you that you that uh, he's going to make your life better. Um, but here's the thing. Is not that good enough? Like, is not the hope of salvation at the time of Easter good enough? Why do we need to tell people about these temporary issues? And temporary issues are a thing. I'm not saying we ignore those. There are places to address that in Scripture. But is it not enough for a Christian to glory in the magnitude of Christ's sacrifice for our sins and the Father's uh, acceptance of that sacrifice and bringing the Son back to life by and validating it as, as the payment is complete? Is there nothing that a Christian could take an encouragement from there? Like, if even if you want to go the Joel Osteen route of encouragement, is there nothing genuine to the resurrection to glory in for a Christian? Is that really the message? Yeah. Um, well, again, with without an emphasis on hell, and Joel Osteen has said, I'm not going to preach about hell, I'm not going to talk about hell, and he's even suggested that everyone's going to heaven. Um, there is no salvation for in the future. Everybody's saved in the future. What, what, what Jesus is is to make your right now better. And you notice that he said, I don't think G God would have you alive if he didn't have something great in your future. Now, he remember the context here. He's not talking about heaven. Because otherwise, that's not a reason for you to be alive, right? Tell that heaven, to Pharaoh. Heaven being great in the future is a good reason for us, for God to have us dead, right? So we can be in heaven with him. That's the great thing in the future. He's saying I, you wouldn't ha be alive right now on this earth if he didn't have a great thing for you. And when he says great, he's talking about resurrection, right? Powerful. Everything's going right. Everything's going the way you want it to go. Um, Tell that to Pharaoh. <laughs> That was not what God had planned for him. He was alive, and God's very specifically, and you can get into debates about Romans 9, but very clearly in Romans 9, God says, I ra rose you, raised you up to demonstrate my wrath and my justice. So Pharaoh was alive, rejecting God, and saying, and, and as long as he was alive, God was saying, my purpose in this is to demonstrate my wrath and my justice, and I'm going to punish them. That mm. was the point. So no, you can't make that statement to everybody. Well, but, but also think about think about all of the apostles who who were martyred. <laughs> like as far right. as what Joel Osteen considers to be great things in their future, that was not it, right? Paul had but terrible you have to, disease. You have to remember the great bank uh, accounts they had, all the family, the, the their family relationships were perfect. All yeah. of that was very good for all the apostles. They were uber wealthy, healthy, and wise. Right. Yeah, exactly. Well, here's here's the end of that interview. I wanted to just play a quick quick clip of the end of the interview, and then we're going to go to Ainsley, Ainsley's Bible study, where it goes a little bit into a little bit more detail on his Christmas message, which is all about, I mean, I'm sorry, Easter message, which is all about us, right? Or, or not us, probably not us. We do, probably don't qualify, but uh, for the ones who follow, follow him. Look, Dan. Joel, a lot of people are hurting right now. Gas prices, inflation, people can't pay their bills. What's your message? My message is to stay in faith, that God knows what you're going through. He sees every tear. He sees every heartache. He sees every unfair thing that happens. Keep doing the right thing, even when it's hard, because God sees it. And he's going to give you the strength to get through. He's going to open doors you can't open. He's going to take you where you can't go on your own. When you believe, all things are possible. And not only that, Ainsley, when you believe, you have, you have strength from the inside. In other words, you know, if you get bitter and discouraged, it's taking your st strength, it's taking your joy. I think that's what you have to say. You know, God, I'm going to get up today. I'm going to be grateful. I believe you're protecting me, and I'm going to take it one day at a time. Well, Joel, as we're all getting ready for church. You mean, okay, l let me just say, you, he has a way with words of, of taking basic Christian concepts and making you feel really good with them. But are, are they are they fair points to make from the resurrection of Christ? Nope. No. <laughs> like here, no, here's the thing. A lot of what he said, I could totally amen. A lot of what he said is that, um, for example, with the Ukraine thing, he said it's in God's hands. That's true. By the way, what are you telling to all the Ukrainians that are dying? That, that apparently they're, 
the the plan God had for them was not to protect them. Now, where does that come in? Because you just talked about this, Joel. How does this work into your theology? You have to have a theology that says, yes, God blesses his people. Yes, he will, he will uh, protect them. But he also puts them through trials and tribulations and 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 even his own uh correction for them as a father to his child so there's there's just no the there's no balance to this because some of what he said is perfectly true god is the one that protects me i don't draw a breath if it weren't for god but you have to balance that with and god's purpose is not always to make you wealthy to make sure that you always have uh even food on the table and clothes on your back, sometimes Christians go through real poverty. Yeah. But that doesn't upend the truth of God's rulership over the universe. And I don't think there's any room in his theology for balancing out what he says. Yeah, and keep in mind... Also, it has nothing to do with the resurrection. Right. Keep in mind that the greatest thing that God did and what the resurrection all is, is all about is saving us from condemnation in hell, which is what we deserve which Joel Osteen refuses to talk about. So he doesn't have a lot to say about the resurrection then, um, except, you know, just making into fluffy things um, that are not really what it's about. So, you know, in his defense, he's put himself in a position where there's nothing to say about the resurrection. It's not really a wonderful day for him, um, unless it becomes all about about you, right? And not about Unless Christ. it becomes allegory. Exactly. Um, and we're actually I'm going to try to um, play a clip, a couple clips of him and his denial to talk about hell and, and that kind of thing, uh, if we have time at the end. Let me play a clip from uh, Ainsley's Bible study. Uh, you can find all this stuff on foxnews.com. Here is a clip of him uh, making this point in, in the Bible study for, for his Easter message. Let's talk yeah. about Easter, too, because it's so important. We wouldn't have Easter. We wouldn't be Christians without this holiday. What does it mean to you, and what is your message? Well, you know, Easter is the resurrection. It's, it's, it's why we can celebrate, like you said. And my message this year is going to be about how there can be things in our life that look dead, dead dreams, a dead relationship, and, you know, maybe something like, you know, your health, it feels like it's kind of dead, like you're never going to get well, never break an addiction. But I believe one message of Easter is, is resurrection, and that is that God can resurrect dead things in our life. In other words, it's not over until God says it's over. When you think about Ainsley on, on Friday when Jesus was in the tomb, everybody was mourning. The Christians were mourning, and it looked pretty, looked pretty bad. It was dark. The sun wouldn't even shine. And we go through these times, but you got to remember, if, it may be Friday, but you have to remind yourself that Sunday is coming, mm -hmm. that God is still in control, that He knows how to turn a medical situation around, turn a child around, or turn your health around. It says when you believe, all things are possible. It doesn't say you have to figure it out. So there are things that we're going to all face that in the natural, there is no way out. I mean, you mentioned my mom, medically speaking, they gave her no chance back in 1981, terminal cancer of the liver. And all we could do is what I'm asking you to do is we said, God, there's no way medically speaking, but God, we know you have the final say that you made our bodies, that you can bring healing. And, and you know, it didn't happen overnight, but little by little, my mother got better and better. I want to point out just because you, you understand where he's going with this. Uh, we don't have to finish the clip. Um, I want to point out that he's trying to draw from from the text that if we believe, God will turn things around. But here's the thing. The disciples didn't believe that Jesus was going to rise from the dead, and he rose from the dead. One of the things is that Jesus is going to do what he's going to do. Now, we should place our faith and trust in him, but whether we place our faith and trust in him, he's still going to do what he's going to do, right? It doesn't mean that we don't pray and all those sort of things, but the, the message of Easter is that he has the power, he has a plan, and he's accomplishing his plan. And we better get on board and understand that he's doing it, but <laughs> it's not going to stop his plan whether or not we do. Um, the allegory here doesn't even seem to fit because he's trying to say, if we'll just believe, God will resurrect dead things in our lives. And he's using the disciples as an, as an example. Their dead thing in their life was Jesus. <laughs> And if they would just believe, he would resurrect him. No, they didn't believe, and he resurrected him anyway, because that was his plan for the ages. Jesus was going to be resurrected. The point he's making might might be drawn from another passage and, and might be fairly drawn from another passage, um, some of the aspects of the point. But it's certainly not a fair exegesis of, of the resurrection story. 
Yeah, and here's the thing. Um, God is not Tinkerbell. He exists if you believe him or not, and he will raise Christ from the dead whether you believe it or not, like you just pointed out. It's like, this wasn't dependent on their faith or it wouldn't have happened. But interestingly enough, once again, we see a situation where he has bypassed the obvious primary, even secondary and tertiary um, uh, things to take from this text. But there is some nugget of truth to what he's saying in that is the resurrection a good demonstration that God does have the power to heal the, the, the sick and that God does have the power to, to restore your relationships and stuff like that yes he does have that power and the resurrection sure demonstrates the all, all awesome power of god to do the impossible but it's then to take it and say and you can command god's will by x y and z it is the poison in the well that poisons the entire water supply and that's the problem we run into. That's the thing is like, like you said, Joel, Joel Osteen has a way of putting things. And one of the ways he puts things is like a lot of it sounds orthodox and Christian. But there's just some poison in the well and it poisons all of the water. Mm -hmm. The key is when a message feels really good, double check and make sure that's scriptural. Because <laughs> because there's there's a tendency then for you to accept it without it being scriptural because it feels like something you want to accept. That doesn't mean that everything that's scriptural is, is going to feel bad. It just means we should double check especially hard when it does feel really good. If it's a feel-good message, that's great, as long as it's found in scripture, not something we just want. And, and I would add on to that, train yourself to feel good for sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. maybe this is just me, but when the, the the doctrinally heavy, meaty stuff is when my soul is rejoicing. Like when people are telling stories and whatnot, I can take it or leave it. But when messages have doctrine and truth to them, my, my spirit kind of rejoices in me. And even last episode, when we were discussing the resurrection, I really was happy because I love the resurrection. It's something I can rejoice in. So along with be skeptical if somebody is just sort of telling you all these very nice things and you feel good, learn to rejoice in the things that are biblically grounded, mm -hmm. not things that are just what somebody wants to say and attach the Bible on at the end. Yeah, so good. And not to revisit that point, but <laughs> we probably did a poor job of presenting it, but we were on cloud 10 when we finished recording it because because it was biblical truth that we were dealing with, and this is what makes us as excited. And as Christians, this should be what excites us. Um, Isn't it Cloud9? Yeah, but 10 is like the next level. above. I don't even know nine. what the reference is, I so, you know, know it could be. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, <laughs> here's a clip uh, from YouTube I just grabbed while we were talking uh, to show some of the things that Joel Osteen has said about why he doesn't talk about hell. And God is not in the condemning business. He's in the restoration business. His sermons are relentlessly positive, and that's made him a target of critics who say Osteen sometimes sounds less like a preacher and more like a motivational speaker. You have to take the hand you've been dealt and make the most of it. You know, you've been criticized for church light. Yeah, that's right. For a cotton candy yeah. message. Do you feel like you're cheating people by not telling them about the hell part? The no, because, part? no, I really don't, because it's a different approach. You know, it's not hellfire and brimstone, but I say most people are beaten down enough by life. They already feel guilty enough. They're not doing what they should do, raising their kids. or the, You know, we can all find reasons. So I want them to come to Lakewood or our, our meetings and be lifted up to say, you know what? I may not be perfect, but I'm moving forward. I'm doing better, and I think that motivates you to do better. Lord, I just think it Beaten down by life does not mean they understand the reality and the serious nature of hell. Calling people to, to, to admit the reality of hell is not beating them down. It's telling them, listen, here's the thing. <laughs> You're going to hell. So are we all. Unless we've accepted Christ as our Savior, you need salvation. This is telling a drowning man, You're drowning. Uh, you need Jesus, you need salvation, right? This is telling a dying person, you're dying, you know, whatever, whatever analogy what you want to use. This is telling people, listen, it's bad, but there's salvation. There is no reason for salvation 
if they don't understand the reality of the condemnation of God, not just the bad, how bad life is. We don't need to see how bad life is. If, if we're saved, this life is the closest we ever get to hell. And if we're believers, if we're unbelievers, if someone is an unbeliever, this life is the closest they'll ever get to heaven because it's getting much worse. What we want is to help people with afterlife, not this life. I mean, yeah, this life is great. We want to help people with it, but it's, it, it's not the issue. It's not the important thing. I cannot believe that someone, again, who calls himself a church leader, I just heard say, God is not in the condemning business. Yeah. I, 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 we could literally do an entire episode just going verse after verse after verse of God pronouncing condemnation on people. When he, um, so for example, when he's talking to the the pharisees he calls them a brood of vipers and says how will you escape the the judgment that's coming he says uh um talking later he says then shall you say also the, them on the left hand depart from me ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels how about revelation 21 verse 8 but the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake with burnt which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death by the way who do you think is casting them into the lake of that burns with fire and brimstone it is all through the scripture the balance of scripture because the bible Bible is not all condemnation. The balance of scripture is forgiveness and peace and joy and mercy and love and condemnation and judgment and righteousness. Um, and the condemnation's there. You, yeah. you, you have to have balance. If you place too much emphasis on these things that people like to hear, like the love and the happiness and the grace, which is there, and you don't balance it with what else the Bible says, you're going to create spiritually weak and dead people. It's like a lawyer telling a, um, a rapist, you know, hey, you know, you're going to go stand before the judge, but don't worry. Uh, he's a good judge, but he's not in the condemning business. <laughs> which is it? Is he a good judge or is he in the condemning business if this guy's a rapist, right? I mean, which is it? We are guilty against God. This is why Jesus died on the cross, because we are guilty. We are condemned. Jesus took the condemnation on himself and offers us forgiveness as we repent and turn to him in faith. That's what it's all about. You take the condemnation out of it, none of the rest of it makes sense, and it's all just help, self-help stuff to make you feel good. And that's the problem. Yeah. That's and the here's problem. the thing. I think, I think Mr. Osteen needs to contemplate more the justice of God. Yeah. Because he is, he is the justifier, but he is the just. He is a just judge, and if you have any grip of your own sinfulness, that ought to terrify you. Yeah, 100%. Couldn't say it better myself. Guys, thanks for watching today. That's the end of our, our episode. We're out of time, but don't forget to um, subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, and to trust Christ by faith if you haven't done that. Uh, repent and turn to him by faith, and we'll see you next time right here on Point of View.